Hey friends, have you heard of the word coma before? Given you clicked on the video either on accident or on purpose, you probably have some idea. It wasn't on purpose. I was afraid. And the key to understanding it is actually in the name itself and what it stands for. That is the kinetic energy released per unit mass or material as some people say. But before we can really understand in detail what coma is, I need a favor. First of all, hit that like button down below. Yeah, okay. And then watch these videos because you first need to understand the general idea around X-ray interactions with matter and the different dose quantities we work with. Pause the video, open a new tab, go watch those videos and I've linked them down below for you and then and only then come back here, okay? All right, welcome back. So first, let's remind ourselves what absorbed dose is. It's the first fundamental dose quantity I talked about, which basically states that it's the energy deposited into a medium divided by the mass of that medium. Now, what exactly do I mean by energy deposited into a medium? And this is where the X-ray interactions come in, where we have the photoelectric effect and Compton scatter. They essentially describe what happens when an X-ray photon comes in and interacts with an electron. And depending on its energy, it has slightly different outcomes. So when the X-ray comes in and interacts with the electron and releases them, transferring its energy, this energy deposition is expressed in two ways. First, as the energy lost by the photon, obviously. And second, the energy contained within those release electrons. However, here's the key point, that it's for a specific unit of mass, or let's say a piece of tissue. Some of those electrons that are released as a result of the X-ray interaction will be contained within the mass. But then some will escape the region of interest that we've defined to be our mass, just because they have a high enough energy to do so. These electrons that escape will then deposit their energy at some distance away from the original interaction process. So it still deposits that energy, but it's just not in that localized region it started off in. To summarize, this means that absorbed dose is equal to the energy deposited in a particular mass, that is the energy given up by the photons in the original interaction, plus the energy of the electrons entering or in the mass, minus the energy of the electrons escaping from that mass. Again, if the energy of the electrons that are released are high enough, that is if sufficient energy was deposited onto them by the incoming photon, then the amount of energy absorbed along the depth axis of this material will look like this. Now this is what we call a depth dose curve, which as the name suggests is plotting the amount of energy absorbed in a material as a function of the depth or let's say the thickness of the material. So as we move along the x-axis, this means that there's hypothetically more of that material or that there's a greater thickness of it, okay? If we then compare this to much higher energy photons, the depth dose curve looks a bit different. The main and obvious difference is in the beginning, the first few microns of tissue, where it looks like there's a bit of a lag. What's happening here is that the absorbed dose from these higher energy X-rays is increasing over a larger distance. And because these electrons have such high energy, they've escaped that original region and interaction site and their energy is being deposited elsewhere. And when you think about it, that doesn't really count as absorbed dose in that area. Because remember, kerma is the total kinetic energy transferred into a region of interest, focusing on the production of electrons. Whereas absorbed dose is the energy absorbed in that region of interest. So any electrons that are released in the interaction site, these energies are counted with kerma, but not for absorbed dose because they ultimately ended up depositing their energy somewhere else. Make sense? That's an important distinction. That's why for higher energy X-rays in the depth dose curve, there is initially little dose or energy absorbed because the energies are too high to be contained in a very small region or at that depth of that material. And conversely, lower energy electrons will be absorbed much closer to the site of origin. And we call this the build-up region, where it's losing more kinetic energy than it is gaining from anywhere else. Which means that by definition, absorbed dose is always either less than or equal to kerma. And they equal each other out after a certain depth of thickness of tissue, where these lines meet which is where we have what's called charged particle equilibrium, which simply means the charge coming into the region is equal to the charge leaving that region. So this means if we use kerma instead of absorbed dose, we don't see that initial discrepancy in the absorption of dose within the first few microns of tissue for those higher energy electrons. So this line here is really representing kerma. And for our purposes anyways, that is the radiation we use in diagnostic radiography, kerma and absorbed dose are basically the same because the photon energies aren't that high relative to therapeutic exposures, for example. All right, that's it for this one. If you were interested enough to stay this late into the video, then I applaud you. Your future seems bright. Oh, me? Now I talked about absorbed dose a fair bit in this one. So to further expand on the other dose quantities, click here to watch that video, which I think you'll find quite useful. Okay, take care for now. Stay curious. Bye-bye.